Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about this new lens that I got. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous video, I uh, recently got a new camera, the Sony A7C. I've been using it for a while. Man, this camera is amazing. And probably if you are in the market looking for a, a new camera, you should check out the A7C. Anyways, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the new lens that I got. This is a cinema lens, the Rokinon 24 millimeter t 1.5 this is a cine lens now there is a difference between a cine lens and a normal your normal prime lens however i'm not really going to give you differences between the two but today my focus is to give you a, an overview of this lens the rocking on 24 millimeter cine lens how it performs like right now i am using it to record this video the, the image that you are seeing it's a sample image of the Rokinon 24 millimeter T1.5 Cine lens. I'm going to give you some details, some specs about this lens as well as the build quality, how I think about this build quality. And you're also going to see different footages that I took outside of my environment here, which outside, I went outside, I took a couple of videos and we're going to look at as well. So you can see how great this is. I've been using this lens mounted on the A7C for a couple of days and uh, I want to show you what I discovered and what I think about this lens. I was always set myself away on getting a lens such as this one but you know what sometimes they say if you keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and you expect to get a different result you probably won't get that result you gotta do something different to get a, the result that you want and uh, i was like you know what i'm gonna try this cine lens i never used a cine lens before but this one convinced me cine lens is a way to go. And actually, I was looking to get a pram lens for this Sony A7C. The kit lens that comes with the camera is great. It's okay, for example, if you're using it indoors and maybe some other stuff. For the most part, this one does the job. But I have to say this lens convinced me on using a cine lens and probably I may just be buying a cine lens if I need a new lens. Now, enough of talking. Let me go quickly about the specs and the build quality of this lens. When you touch this lens, I think it's noticeable when you touch it, it's weight. And uh, this one weighs 1.4 pounds. And if you're using it on a smaller body such as the Sony A7C, definitely you will feel that you have mounted a heavy equipment in your hands. Overall, the build quality of this lens is really remarkable. Although it's plastic, but it's a durable plastic. It's not something that I think it can break easily. So um, you don't have to worry because it's plastic build that you have to compromise with the quality that this lens produces. So I would say don't worry about the plastic build of this one, but it's really, really durable and uh, remarkable product. The mounts on this lens, it's metal. So that's actually even better because if you have a plastic mount, sometimes you know what happens with plastic, but this one comes with a metal mount, which is great. While we are talking about the mount, this lens comes in different mounts. You have the Nikon mount, you have the Sony mount, with the Sony E like right now, it's Sony E. Uh, you also have the Canon mount. I believe they also have the RF as well as the EF mount. And they also have Micro Four Third mount. But for me, as I mentioned earlier, it's on uh, Sony E mount. As I keep on saying, this is 24 millimeter and uh, the glass that used for this lens, it's multi-coated, which means it prevents the light flare as well as ghosting, which is really good. The aperture ring as well as the focus ring, they are really smooth, which actually brings out to say this lens, the aperture ring is a D-click aperture ring, which means when you turn the flow, it has a long throw and uh, it doesn't have that click you have on your normal prime lens. It's really smooth when you're turning it. It's just smooth and uh, it has long throw both for the focus as well as the aperture ring. Another thing you will notice about this lens is that when you look at the number, so let's say your focus is at, let's say, you know, inf infinite, for example. 
when you're looking at it on the right side as well as on the left side you will notice that they are numbering so you know exactly uh, whichever side of the camera you will be it's easier for you to visualize where your settings are and that's the same thing with the aperture ring as well on the you have the number on the left as well as on the right side of the lens which is great when you are operating maybe you are on the left side and it's easier for you to quickly look at and see where you have set your aperture with this one you can also use it for either full frame or APS-C and you know when you are using APS-C you will have some compromise on the wider view of the lens with this one when you are when it is mounted on a full frame you get a wider view over 82 degree and when you mount it on APS-C you get a wider view of 57 degree so you can see the uh, the trade-off when you are uh, using it on either full frame or APS-C sensor unlike other cine lenses you will have the one which are specifically made for APS-C sensors and the others which are made for full frame sensors but with this one the Rokinon 24 millimeter you can use it on either without no problem this one is fully manual so all the operations that you do on this lens is manual so when you are operating this lens you want to put your camera into a manual mode uh, your focus has to be on a manual mode so that you can uh, be, get a great uh, result on this one so those are the specs about this one uh, i'm not going to go into too much of nitty gritty detail this is that's the job for gerald and dan and other people who do more technical in depth but one thing i need to uh say when it comes to really nitty gritty is that you get a chromatic aberration on this one and i notice that probably you can notice it on this one you see on the edges you will see that it's a little bit like a purple ish that's the uh, uh, that's the chromatic aberration now other people will love it other people won't love it but when you are using a cine lens most of them you get the chromatic chromatic aberration but for me i don't think it's an issue for me and uh, that actually it, it's a characteristic of a cine lens so uh, it doesn't bother me when i see that now let's look at the different footages i took outside using this cine lens <music> Although this lens is primarily for video, but you can take some great pictures as well. So I took a few samples of pictures and I was blown away with the result that I got. It's manual. The manual focus is not as fast as you would or want it to be compared to a autofocus prime lens. But I have to tell you, once you dial in correctly your focus as well as your aperture, you will get great results. For example, this picture that I took, man, I was just blown away. How you can see the detail and look at the sky. That's exactly how the sky was. You can see it kept the colors and everything. Um, I just loved it. I really liked the, the results I got out of it. And uh, I also use it during uh, Zoom calls, uh, during my meetings, I'm using this one. Personally, I'll be using it on many occasions, whether I use it for video at work or I use it for other things. Like now, I'll be probably be using it unless if I'm using something to uh, show show off products that requires faster autofocus. Probably that's when I'll be using the kit lens. Overall, I really like this lens because uh, I think it's it's something that uh, if you are looking to get your hands on on a Cine lens, I would definitely encourage you to look at the Rokinon uh, 
I'll definitely encourage you to look at the Rokinon Cine lenses. If you don't like the 24 millimeter, you can look at the 35 millimeters. You can look the 84 millimeter, or you can look uh, the 12 millimeter as well. I think they do have 12, they also have 16. So it's up to you which one you like. And uh, the good thing uh, see about this one is that when you buy these lenses and you mount your camera into your camera rig, right? Like your stabilizer and whatsoever, the distance between the focus ring and the aperture ring is the same on all the lens lineup. So, which is a great, a great thing because when you mount your camera, you will have the same, you don't have to change your settings and whatnot. So it's easy swap out on, on lenses. That's a plus. I have to warn you on something. When you're using this lens and you fully open it to the aperture 1.5, you will get the image a little bit blown out. So I think the right range of start using this lens is from uh, 2.0 when you put your aperture 2.0 that's when you start getting some great nice images i mean you can try it with 1.5 fully open but i think be, uh, starting from 2 that's where you start getting some great great images and a nice bokeh and 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 all that if you are outside and you still want to fully open it to 1.5 perhaps you want to use the ND filter. I'm a little bit skeptical on using the ND filter because the lens, I mean, the mirror used or the glass used for this lens with the multi-coat that they've used, it's just amazing that I don't want to put another thing on uh, in front of the lens. Remember, everything you put in front of the lens will factor the image that goes through your camera. So that's something you need to be mindful of. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, leave in the comments and I hope I catch you on the next one. Peace out guys.